Hello, my soul-seeking friends. It's Shanna. Thank you so much for listening to Sense of Soul podcast. Enlightening conversations with like-minded souls from around the world, sharing their journey of finding their light within, turning pain into purpose, and awakening to their true sense of soul. If you like what you hear, show me some love and rate, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a Sense of Soul Patreon member, where you will get ad-free episodes, monthly circles, and much more. Now go grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Hey listeners, if you haven't already, check out Sense of Soul on YouTube. Sense of Soul has really only ever been audio, but I'm trying to put out some video. So go over there, subscribe and check it out. Thank you. And on today's episode, we have Kurt Johnson. He is a Twin Flames and Manifestation Law of Attraction coach. He's on a mission to help you become a master manifester. His teachings focus on authenticity, embracing human emotions, and integrating them into spirituality. And he is also the host of the New World All-Star, which is an amazing YouTube and podcast, which I would definitely recommend. And on today's episode, Kurt brings science and spirituality together and demonstrates how they inherently are connected. So please welcome Kurt Johnson. Hello there. Thank you so much, Kurt, for coming on. I appreciate you being with me. I'm excited to talk about um, the law of attraction. And I feel like we're at a time where we are seeing that we are far more powerful than we were sold. 100%. And I like what you said there because that is the messaging that we humans have been given from the system for millennia. And in the, I want to say, 17th, 18th century, we humans really kind of doubled down on that, or at least started to, and now it's reached a crescendo when you have the discipline of science, conventional science, which I appreciate very, very much. It's very handy. Uh, Western civilization has proven out a lot of these spiritual teachings Mm -hmm. that people have embraced as part of our cherished traditions for so long, but The object of science from the get-go two, three hundred years ago was to demonstrate that we live in separation, that we live in a dead universe, and you're just a bag of bones, and nobody knows what happens to you when you die, and you don't have a soul, which is technically true, because you are a soul. Uh, There's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as telepathy. You are limited. Listen to us. Go back to sleep. Go back to your job, yada, yada, yada. And I don't want to undermine the successes of materialist science, which is basically what I just described. So materialist science is saying, you know, to prove reality, we must look in material. We must look in matter, like physical matter, which, by the way, you could even ask the most conventional table pounding atheist scientist you you say to him hey it's true that we've never proven the existence of matter we've never found it and he's going to go yeah but blah 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 the whole premise of conventional science was biased from the get go which is saying that we live in separation. Everything is entropy. We live in a cold, dead universe, and there's no connection at all. There's no underlying energetic force. And that's how we ended up with basically what you were just saying a second ago, where you know we're told that there is no potential. We're not creators of our reality. We're powerless, et cetera, et cetera. That's where that all came from. Yeah. You know, I found out recently, just keep going back to it, is that when I discovered that the word heresy means choice in Greek. I I believe it. I mean, they took away our choice with that thought process that we Mm -hmm. can't even have our own. Like, there's no choice here. It's this way or this way. Mm -hmm. The The other way is is heresy. (laughs) It's duopoly. And it's always been that way. You're either Catholic or you're Christian. You're either Republican or you're Democrat. You're either this or you're that. 
unless you're dealing with, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I don't know, communism, where they go, you just have this, everything else yeah. off with your head, right? Now, it is nice to see even the discipline of science becoming more and more enlightened, if you will. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of scientists that might not like that word, but there's a lot of them who do. And this is not something they're telling you on television. They're still running the old narrative of separation and powerlessness, limitation. If you look to TV, social media, Hollywood, uh, television programming, you know, just the education system, the the whole established order of things, which isn't all bad. It is nice to live in a technologically advanced civilization. I do love my running water. I do love living in a house instead of a cave. But what they're not telling you on television or anywhere else for that matter, what they're not telling you is that there is a crisis taking place, an identity crisis taking place in the institution of science. And so now you have where half of the scientific community is still like hardcore materialist science to the point where it's kind of become their belief system, ideology. I'm trying hard not to say the R word, religion. And and there's nothing wrong with religion. It's just that's kind of it's it's really not a lot different. It's an ideology of materialist science. And and again, it's not very scientific because you're you started with this assumption that materialism was the way it's all gonna work from get from the get-go, two, three hundred years ago. Okay. So now what we have emerging in the science community is this information science where what they are saying is the substrate of physical reality is information, which sounds like esoteric, if you will, because it sounds so abstract, and it is. So in other words, the substrate of reality, the foundation of reality, what physical matter comes from is information. And that's a nice way of dancing around the word mind or mentalism. And I've even heard like a prominent mathematician, Greg Chaitin, talking to a philosopher about, yeah, that's exactly what we're saying. It's mind. The universe is mental. So again, and and he's not just some guy in his basement or something, right? You can go look him up, Greg Chaitin, C-H-A-I-T. You got Greg, you got Max Tegmark, Lothar Schaefer, um, Robert Lawrence Kuhn, Christoph Cook. The list goes on and on. Prestigious physicists, mathematicians, right? These types, not just some guy in his basement talking about Physical reality manifests out of empty space, out of pure information, and that the universe is mind. This is pretty radical Mm -hmm. compared to the narrative we've been given about materialist science, which is that we are limited. They've never proven the existence of matter. The deeper they dig, they just keep finding energy, and it seems that this energy emerges from a thing called information, which is, again, Mm -hmm. information is a nice science-y kind of way of saying mind. Now, I would take your listeners back six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 years. Nobody's sure exactly when uh, this person lived on Earth, but there was a man named Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus, as in Hermetic Philosophy, who laid down the laws of the universe, and that was the very first thing that he taught people. And this hermetic philosophy is the basis of all of the law of attraction teachings that you see everywhere. Bob Proctor, you know, The Secret, Abraham Hicks, they all have a different way of kind of talking about the same thing, right? These fundamental principles of principles of reality. And interestingly, if you study like the history of the, the different religions of the worlds 
you'll see it's as if hermetic philosophy 10,000 years ago was like a big bag of seeds. And somebody reached into the bag, took a huge handful of seeds and flung it all throughout the world. And all the different cultures in our world have components of hermetic philosophy. Now, just to tie this all together for you and your audience, what I'm telling you is science is proving out the fundamental foundational spiritual philosophies, ancient spiritual philosophies that have been written about for almost 10,000 years. Science is proving that these things are real. And this is kind of one of my messages, you know, like my paid coaching students that are in my manifesting program. I start basically with the science. It, it just really helps the mind because the mind doubts, right? It's always going to object to this magical thinking. But what I'm telling you is it's not really magic. It's technology and science has proven or is in the process of proving, demonstrating that we appear to be living in a participatory universe. And they're not telling you that on TV. But again, if you hop on YouTube, for example, and you look around for some of the names that I mentioned, you'll find some very serious and very highly respected physicists, mathematicians and the like having this conversation, they're just not telling you that in the mainstream. And by the way, if your viewers are interested in finding specifically a place where you can see content like this, there, well, there's my YouTube channel, of course, but there's another YouTube channel that I love called Closer to Truth. Just so that your audience can, can see for themselves, like, yeah, I'm really not making this stuff up. There are scientists sitting around talking about this stuff closer to truth the uh, the host his name is robert lawrence coon i don't know how i don't know how he knows all these people but he knows he's very connected in the science community and he sits down and has these talks with some blue ribbon a physicist or somebody telling you yeah consciousness is fundamental <laughs> consciousness is an unexplainable cosmic force it's fundamental this information sprang from consciousness. And of course, physical matter springs from the information. Well, that sounds a lot like the triune, body, mind, soul. Hmm. <laughs> you know, tomorrow, actually, I have on Karen Newell, who is Evan Alexander's partner. And I've had on Evan Alexander before as well. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a neuroscientist who had a near-death experience and he wrote The Proof is Heaven. I mean, he comes from this very scientific background and then you have an experience, a lived experience. And so now you're like, now what? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have more space now to seek and to be curious. You know, We have a choice to do this. And I think that in this space now, people are expanding their consciousness. And I, I find it amazing. And what I think is interesting too, is there's almost like a mirroring of technology. I was even thinking earlier when I was watching one of your YouTubes, I think that synchronicity is kind of like an algorithm, but a spiritual yeah. algorithm. Yep. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. You're right yeah. over the bullseye. And this is what they mean by information. Now there is an underlying structure to metaphysics, which is kind of, I think, the catch-all discipline that demonstrates kind of what you were just talking about. And that structure, you could call it sacred geometry, numerology, those two things, how they kind of crisscross and work together. There is a mechanism, and this is the whole basis of the quantum theory of information realism. And even, you know, Scientific American Magazine recently begrudgingly admitted, yeah, this is where things are headed. You know, you could tell whoever the author was, was a materialist because they kind of poke fun at it. But they're like, yeah, we're going there, guys. This is where things are headed and there's no stopping it. And it's because it's really the only answer. Now, here's an interesting question for you. What is it that organizes this information and gets it to do what it does? 
it's a formless space. It was that consciousness. To yes. give credit to, you know, back in the day, I used to give credit to angels. Like I'd see two, and I'd be like, oh, Archangel Michael is with me. Now I see that I am finding these clues or wings. Is it like my future self or is it like a past self or it, it is a version Both. of me though? Consciousness is non-local. Right. Uh, and this is being, oh man, there's been some really fascinating controlled scientific research done on that. It would just really? blow your mind. So to seek ultimate reality is to follow explanations until explanations end, right? But that's me. I'm a seeker. Right. So, and that's what we as mortal humans are prone to do. We have a propensity to seek answers. We want to know what is fundamental and irreducible. Where do you end up when you get to the end of explanations? And it turns out that consciousness is what that is, which, like you said, is that formless essence. It's not existence, and it's not not existence. It's not thing, and it's not nothing. It's neither. It's non-duality, which right off the bat, science and true spiritualism, genuine spiritualism, right, as it were, that's what they have very much in common. Um, you could, you know, obviously anybody hop online and just look up non-duality teachings and you're going to find Ram Das, Yogananda, Eckhart Tolle, Rupert Spira, Buddha, Jesus, right? We have a word for it, non-duality. It's consciousness. It's neither existence nor non-existence. It's this formless, timeless essence. That's what's fundamental and irreducible. And it's so far removed from what we consider to be real, including empty space, that you can't understand it mentally. But mm -hmm. you don't need to. It's like you said a few minutes ago, you experience it. You yes. experience these things. And so when you see these fascinating synchronicities come about in your daily life, it's because of this force consciousness. It's non-local. Mm -hmm. They've been looking in the brain for it for decades. And the deeper they dig, the more that they're starting to find out that it doesn't come from the brain, which is very ironic. We're going to prove that it's coming from the brain. And then they find out, oh, wait, it's coming from out there somewhere. Consciousness is an unexplainable cosmic force. And the reason it's unexplainable is because an explanation is mind, it's concept, it's thought, which is part of this whole dialogue too. But what comes before concept is the consciousness. So there is this intelligence that you are a part of that is bringing all of these experiences to you, coordinating all of these things, and it transcends time. And that's kind of one of the things that we mean when we say it's non-local, right? So as, as Albert Einstein said, past and future happen simultaneously. Ultimately, time is linear time is a construct of the, the duality of mind. That's the yin and yang symbol, right? That's the alpha and the omega. That's mental, that physics, right? Positive proton, negative electron, the whole universe works on that duality, but consciousness is the non-dual great mystery, which mm -hmm. transcends all of what we call existence or non-existence. And that's where the magic comes into this equation. Now, as I often like to say, it's not really magic, it's technology, you could say. We know that there is this force, non-local, called consciousness, so it's not really magic. It's just life. It's, it's, it's pure life itself. It's an intelligence and it's real. The mind wants to explain it somehow. It wants to, you know, A plus B equals C consciousness. There has to be a mm -hmm. calculation. But there isn't one and there doesn't need to be. And the really cool part about all this, again, is we bring it back to experience. You are that consciousness, ultimately. And that's what all the mystics and all the great spiritual teachers have been trying to tell us for thousands of years. You are consciousness. You are not your mind. 
And when you release mental control, that's when all the synchronicities happen, isn't it? Yeah. I just said yesterday to someone, I'm like, my life is one big synchronicity. (laughs) And their response was, well, that means that you're aligned, right? And it's true. I just lean, keep leaning into them. And if they weren't there, I'd be a little worried. <laughs> but you know what will block you from them is seeking to the point where you're driving yourself crazy. Because I've been there. Yeah. And I do have that mind. I have a mind that wants to understand. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, long ago at the beginning of my journey, I asked myself how much of what I believe in have I, you know, been told to believe in. And of that, how much have I truly experienced to be true for myself? And I mean, it was like hardly anything except for like love for my children. I mean, that was the one experience I could tell you that was mine. Everything else I was trying to be and do and believe in was all based on what everyone told me to be. So then I was determined to just go out and just experience everything for myself. And there was so much seeking involved in it, you know, letting go of the religion, letting go of all these things that I thought I knew, even history, you know, everything was so distorted so you end mm-hmm. up going down these rabbit holes. Yeah, I went <laughs> the rabbit holes too. go deep, 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 deep. And I actually explained it like I, I almost felt like I was on a carousel for so long. And then finally, it just stopped. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And then it just is. And I came to a place where you were describing and it made me think of that. Well, that's why they call it a spiritual journey. But you always end up right where you are. And you realize at a deeper, non-conceptual level, non-mental, you realize at a deeper, intuitive, spiritual level that you are all things and that it Mm -hmm. just is. And to the mind, the mind, oh man, it's going to make up so much stuff. It's going to attack that. That's a cop out, right? The ego is very negative. Well, this is spiritualism 101. You know, what I tell all my coaching students is, 80 to 90% of your manifesting game is your Zen game, right? So the, 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 this, the teachings of genuine non-duality spiritualism, right? Which is that source energy that you're tapping into, that infinite consciousness, which you are a tiny little micron of that, Mm -hmm. but it's so powerful And the ego, which is the seeker, it's almost like you have to seek for so long until you just get tired of it. And then you break (laughs) through some kind of glass ceiling or something. And you realize everything that you ever needed is in here. And that sounds like one of those kind of generic spiritual tropes that we hear, but it is true. And what you're actually doing is accessing this mental universe that is what you're doing this is kind of what science is starting to recognize that you are accessing something much much more fundamental and vast you're accessing the field of infinite possibilities and again quantum physics is starting to demonstrate that yeah it really does work that way but that's what this is most people, when they experience what we call intuition, which is that weird knowing and does not need to be explained conceptually, but it's a knowing, right? When you experience that, that's exactly what you're tapping into. Your heart chakra is actually fundamentally connected to your higher self. These things are real. Like you hear this kind of new agey terminology. No, it really does work that way. It really does. And That knowing, what's so interesting about it is it is still very useful because it brings with it information. Mm -hmm. There is information, and that's, again, there's that word again. Because when whenever you get one of these intuitive hits, you just know things. There is information there. But the mind just doesn't like how the information is being delivered because it can't control it, and it tries to invalidate it. And, and these kinds of things, but it is valid information and it happens so much myself personally. I started keeping a journal. I write all this stuff down and I can go back and point to every single one of those intuitive hits and they happen every time, hundred <laughs> percent without fail intuition. It's always now what you're doing is you are tapping into that non-localized consciousness 
where past and future don't really have any meaning. And if you're interested or your audience is interested, I have, you know, like a freebie I could give them. If they want, you can cultivate this intuition using a heart brain coherence technique, which actually has been the product of years and years and years of research. It's so well defined that they're starting to use it with first responders, paramedics, uh, uh, military, police, um, you know, counseling, like family therapy, things like this. They're using this technique. So you probably heard of the Heart Math Institute in California, and they didn't really develop the technique as much as they noticed that it works because this is something that you know, like Buddhist monks have been doing for a long time. They finally put one in uh, like a CAT scanner and ha and observed him doing this thing. And they discovered a new brain state that they didn't even know existed mm -hmm. called gamma. And this gamma state, when you cultivate that brain state, when you practice this technique, you're literally causing intuition. You're cultivating intuition and you're tapping into that infinite field of potential is what you're doing. And the mind really hates this because the mind is saying, well, how do I do that? How do I figure out, understand? It wants a calculation and that's not it. From the mind's point of view, what you're doing intuitively, the best explanation that I could give to the ego would be, you just do it. Because it's a being. And oh, the ego really hates that, which kind of brings me full circle to what you were saying a minute ago, which is the seeking. <laughs> I want to understand conceptually. Mm -hmm. And that ties in again with spiritualism 101. You are not your mind. The ego is just going to do that. It's just going to do so that. Are you speaking of like a discernment exercise or what, what are you talking about this exercise? Yeah, so it's called heart brain coherence. And this is a set of exercises that you're doing to place consciousness around your heart. You take a few measured breaths, and then you cultivate a certain scale of emotions, right? So we humans are the only, or one of the only, I think maybe whales, humans and whales can do this too, but we are capable of causing emotions at will. Mm -hmm. Everybody does this already. If, if you think about it, you could be sitting on the couch and make yourself feel gratitude or make yourself feel sad. This is why visualizations are so popular in law of attraction circles. But if it's a high enough frequency of emotion, you actually are able to cross that barrier into the mental universe, which from our limited perspective as a mortal human appears as I think what you would call spiritual from the point of view of God almighty it's it's mental but the way that the all the universe God whatever you want to call it experiences information is a lot different than the way we do with our limited mind our little pea brain ego where it's this incessant rattling of noise in your mind. So again, using this word information helps you to kind of understand where it is still similar. So intuition is still information. So the technique, you place your hand over your heart. And the reason you're doing this is so that you can focus on that area so anybody that's ever tried an induction meditation, you know what it means when you move consciousness around in your body. You can feel different parts of your body at will. So that's step one. You place awareness around your heart. Touching your heart assists you in doing that. Step two, you take maybe five or six deep breaths, measured breaths, count to five in. Count to six out. And then cultivate 
one of four emotions, appreciation, care, gratitude, or compassion. And you just do this for maybe four minutes. Keep holding on to this emotional state for four or five minutes. And that's kind of step one. Now, step two, for your audience, if you guys want, you know, just ping me on Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger and just type heart. Just put the word heart and I'll send you a free video to do the full technique because the next thing that you want to do after you've done this first four or five minute exercise is then you kind of switch into a non-dual state of compassion. And what we think of as compassion ordinarily is a form of pity, at least here in the West. But what the Buddhist monks are calling compassion is different. They, they have their own kind of idea of what that looks like. And what you're doing is empathizing with other people, for example, without judgment. So, and as you know, I'm sure you're well aware of this, judgment is, of course, duality. It's either good or bad. So after kind of the first exercise that I took you through a moment ago, the second part is where you, okay, I'm going to turn up the dial on just compassion. And that's when your brain enters this gamma state. And this, by the way, I mean, everybody's heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, his book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, he takes you through these states too. There's a reason what he's telling people is working so effectively and causing mind-blowing breakthroughs for many of his people. And you can reverse the aging process. You can uh, recultivate the telomeres on the end of your chromosomes, if you know what I'm talking about, using these techniques which mm -hmm. do reverse the aging process. Now, the other happy byproduct of this technique, and I do this every day, twice a day, this technique, it's 10 minutes, twice a day, it'll change your life. Suddenly, you start getting more intuitive hits. Mm -hmm. I'll be standing there folding laundry, and all of a sudden, I'll just get overcome with this deep knowing, and it comes with some kind of information about the future, something that's true for me or another person. And it's information, but it's not mental. It's not what we think of as thought. It's this other weird, eerie feeling. It's kind of like deja vu, mm -hmm. if you will. Well, and what's sad is that, that this has been almost like taught out of us, right? Because, you know, it's not, we got told to get out of our heads, you know, as children. Instead of going inside into that, we, we, you know, we were told stop dreaming, mm -hmm. you know, and I was a big daydreamer, you know, always Me too. seeing, you know, <laughs> visualizing and the loving kindness or like a meta meditation was one of the first meditations that really broke me open years ago. And it was much like that, you know, like taking you through the process of first sending love to someone you don't know very well, then sending that love stuff to works. someone that you don't like or that you don't get along with, and mm -hmm. then sending love to yourself, right? which is really a shocker in the end. And you're right. You're going through these different emotions and just really bringing them to the forefront. Another one that I do a lot, and I do it a lot with my clients, is, is the discernment. You know, to really sit with your body, first tell yourself, that you love something and mine's always French fries. Cause there's connection. My momo used to make the best ah, French fries in the world. And I yeah. could smell them in her kitchen. And then, you know, telling yourself that you hate it and sensing your body actually react because mm -hmm. your body's like, no, that's a lie. Right. And then to just realize that we're walking around with that all the time because we're memory. not aligned with our truth. Mm -hmm. yep. How important is it to be in that state to actually have success in manifesting? Yeah. No, you're right. Your body and your mind are manifesting equipment. Um, <laughs> so that makes me think. So two things that makes me think of. The first one is the, the heart-brain coherence technique that I just shared. There's a certain type of cell which 
your heart has about 40,000, which isn't very many, actually, when you consider how many cells it takes to make a whole entire heart, billions. There's 40,000 of these special cells in your heart. There's 40,000 right. in the center of your brain. Mm, they yes. talk. And actually, you know, what I heard recently, Howard Eisenberg told me about this. There's more going from your heart to your brain than there is going to your brain to your heart. Right. So in the Western world, we lead with the mind and we expect the heart to follow. You got to flip it. You lead with the heart and the mind will follow. The mind is not useless. Logic is a very important. You should think with your right. head and your heart. You should. If you think in too flighty and impractical of a way, all the manifesting techniques in the world aren't going to help you if when the opportunity, resources, money, whatever shows up, you blow it all. Right. right? You have to use logic, but right. that's all we do in Western civilization. True. And what the existence of these cells is showing us is that we are literally hardwired for this. Manifesting is part of our firmware. <laughs> our body is manifesting yes. equipment. And here's another thing that I was thinking of when you were talking a minute ago, the exercise that you did where you said, no, I hate French fries. And the body said, I know that's a lie. Well, you can mm -hmm. apply that's That's genius because you can apply a technique like that to so many different things to Everything. even program things that you don't like. If there are like for me, for example, when I was young, the messages I got from the adults around me was shame. You're bad. You're bad all the time. And I was, right. you know, when How I was a kid, all I ever did, it's, it's stored in my body. That's right. And I never did anything when I was a kid either. I was a pretty good kid. Right. Right. It did good in school and I read books and right. But that conditioning is in the body. It's body memory. And that might sound bad until you realize that you can reprogram it. And to reprogram the body takes time. This body memory is incredibly stubborn. It is yeah. so difficult to get rid of oh, it. Yeah. But here's the good news. If you can reprogram positive memories, it's going to be equally as difficult to get rid of it. And guess what? The universe matches whatever it is, whatever habits of emotion that your body and your mind present to it. So if you take the time, if you if you commit to this reprogramming as a way of life, given time, one year, two years, five years, 10 years, when you've deprogrammed and reprogrammed all the negativity into positivity, guess what? It's impossible to be negative at that point. And yeah. you're also very practical as you're doing it. Like I said, you don't want to throw caution to the wind, but everything in our universe is duality. You got to pick one. Okay, well, I'm going to pick positive then. And the body, because it's so slow to change, you can work that to your advantage. You can actually make a permanent fixture of positivity mm -hmm. in your daily life. Yeah. Every time I have pain, I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I can sit with this. Thank you. This body is so amazing that it can literally warn you that you need to do something. It's like your brake light goes on or something, you know, or there's, you know, there's something going on that needs to be, you know, given some care or attention. It's and a communication. So, yeah, shifting that shit communication. You know, I, I was thinking about that too. When you were speaking. It's like, isn't it interesting that we never ever doubt how the frick you and I can sit here and see each other crystal clear or that we're watching television. I can see the sweat on these football players as they're, <laughs> you uh -huh. know, running across the field. I mean, no one ever doubts that, but it's, it's similar. It is similar, but actually we're even more divine than that, mm -hmm. but we still can do it, but we just don't have direct wires, you know, doing right. it. So those direct wires, which are not material, right? Mm -hmm. But they still are. There is still these cords of energy. It's information. That can connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, just to bring this whole entire conversation full circle, the first thing that you said was, we were told this stuff is not real. Again, yeah. they are proof 
proving out the fact that consciousness is non-local. So absolutely, you are you are connected within your own self in more ways than you could possibly imagine, let alone everything else that's out there. You can change all of this stuff just by changing the way you think. If you change how you look at the world, you change how it shows up for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do know I've heard that positivity is such a important part. And actually, it's even one of those seeds that you were saying, taken from the hermetics. And, you know, a lot of people within certain societies understand this. It's one of the highest principles of manifesting is being able to be positive because that positive vibe is so high. I mean, I know that when I was during COVID, when I would sit here and have conversations, if I had COVID with someone like you, there was no way COVID could even affect me at all. It was like that vibration would come in and nothing negative could even Bounces exist off of within you. my body. Yeah. Yeah. It literally is like a force field. And so you notice, I mean, and I also think as I teach this as well, and I've been a body worker for years. I mean, if you're in this low vibration, you will be sick. You will be depressed. You will, you know, you won't be able to create. Well, even conventional you- medical doctors are going to finally, they're starting to admit, yeah, stress causes health problems. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, they called really? it you fibromyalgia for out? me. Right. I believe it. Not to be unnecessarily positive, uh, impractically positive. You know, maybe the best way to put it is, does this serve me or does it not serve me? If it serves me, it's positive. If it doesn't, (laughs) it's negative. I mean, really what this comes down to is asking yourself, well, what do I want here? Ask yourself, what serves me? You know, I really found your YouTube to be very positive. Well, thank you. I try to empower people. A really, really positive outlook Mm -hmm. on life. I try to be very empowering. I call on people to look at things from both the mystical point of view and the practical point of view and ask yourself what serves you, what serves society. I'm all for healthy boundaries and these kinds of things too. But at the end of the day, what I really want is you to increase your consciousness. Take that consciousness and go out there and be a master. I'm here to make masters out of people. Mm. We all can do it. Every one of us. Yeah. That's one of the things in my journey. I've, you know, when I really connected with that, I was a part of you and I'm a part of the earth and we're all one. And that I am, um, is all one is oneness. Then I thought, well, shit, then I'm a freaking creatrix too. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Everybody okay. has this power. You just have to learn to use it. It's like any other skill or talent, like learning to run or walk or talk. We all mm-hmm. have this equipment. We all do. And yeah. it only works if you allow yourself to be a powerful creator who makes their own decisions and does the best thing for you. And Absolutely. it works pretty well. So where can they start watching you so they can get all of this knowledge, all of these little nuggets that you're doing on all of your YouTubes? Sure. Well, the best place for you to find me is my website, newworldallstar.com, A-L-L-S-T-A-R, newworldallstar.com. YouTube is probably where I'm most prominent. Um, If any of your... Uh, listeners would care to join my paid coaching program. It's very affordable. It's ridiculously comprehensive. And there's coaching calls. You can talk to us. There's a community. And we're working. I don't just take your money and run away. I get out of bed every day. I answer everybody's questions. I'm very, very proactive. And just for your audience, I have a special coupon code that is only available to podcast listeners. It's 33% off when you pay in full for my coaching program. It's already not a lot of money. It's very affordable. It's not thousands. The coupon code is ALLSTAR, A-L-L-S-T-A-R, 33%, which I never do that publicly. It's only for podcast listeners. And 
just get started. Find me on YouTube. There's lots of free stuff there. Oh man, there's so much free stuff. That's so cool. Thanks so much for giving out. You know, it is a law, right? The law of attraction. It's like gravity. It's a force. It's not a law like this is the rule. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. You have to stop at the stop sign. You have to pay your taxes. No, not that kind of law. It's like gravity. If you jump off a cliff, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. The universe is already matching what you are being. You might just not like what you're being, and that doesn't mean that you're bad, but we all have issues from our past. We all have skeletons in our closet, and all you got to do is make the decision today. That's it. I'm doing it. I'm going to make this reprogramming a permanent fixture, a permanent way of life. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time and your wisdom. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Keep manifesting.